Hello, fabulous friends, fans, and superstars. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of February 2nd, 2020. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. What an amazing week it is. We have an active and fabulous sky playing out for us right now. Now, before I jump into this week, let's take a step back to last week. We had some difficult uh, alignments taking place, and a lot of it came down to Neptune and Mars. It was Mars and squares and Neptune and Venus, all of that. Confusion is what it came down to, frustration as well for a lot of people out there, especially in the first half of the week. But as we navigated towards the end of the week, we could feel the energy start to lift. Now it is as we start this week, right out of the gate, that we have some truly empowering alignments taking place between Venus and Pluto first, right on Sunday, and then the next day, Venus and Saturn. The type of alignment, the type of conversation is what astrologers call a sextile. And it is one of harmony, certainly, but it's got just a little bit of tension in there as well. So it isn't so much that we just lay back and good things happen and yay, we're happy, but rather this is actually more empowering and can end up being even more positive because it is about recognizing what we could do to improve our circumstances in some way, in this case, to affirm love and wisdom in some way, to affirm faith in some way, and then by taking action, the rewards are there, sometimes many times over. So with Venus speaking with Pluto, I love this energy. It is an energy that is profound. It is deep reaching. It is also very sensual as well. Remember, Venus right now will spend its last full week in the sign of Pisces at the very end of the week changing signs. Now, Venus likes being in the sign of Pisces she is able to bring forward her very best qualities here, not just universal compassion and love, but even on a more personal level, on a more sensual level, she's able to bring forward uh, her best qualities there. Speaking with Pluto adds that much more depth, adds that much more power to this energy as well. And the connection that Venus will make with Saturn speaks to stability, speaks to a sense of groundedness and embodiment. It's like blessings, but they're real, they're tangible. We feel them, yes, but also we are realizing how it is that those blessings are manifesting. Venus by the ancients was called a lower benefic. So a benefic is a blessing, and it is Jupiter that's considered the higher benefic, so it's a higher blessing. So Venus may be considered a lower benefic, but is a benefic nonetheless, is an energy of blessing. And wherever Venus goes, in our own chart certainly, but also collectively as well, wherever Venus is, when she is especially strong, there's a spirit of love that can feel especially strong as well. And you add to this Venus in a sign where she feels strong, well, all of that put together, plus Pluto, a planet of profound strength and depth. Well, it tells me that as we are starting this week, we are connecting to an authentic sense of love within us, or we're taking action as well to support an authentic sense of love. Now, whether that's showing up romantically with others or whether that is showing up in other areas of life, this is ultimately a sense of us making change, facilitating transformation, that's part of Pluto. And in so doing, able to usher in tangible gains. And we can see how these gains can last a really long time. And it is when we have our eye on the big picture that we're able to manifest and be blessed that much more. With Saturn and Pluto both, both of them have an element of sacrifice to them, but it's a little bit different. With Pluto, you're sacrificing the shadow self. You're sacrificing even your own sense of peace, a part of your psyche even. You're sacrificing because you're that dedicated, you're that obsessed even. And I don't mean that obsession is necessarily bad. There are healthy types of obsession out there, of course, Balance is always preferred, but if you're gonna be obsessed, there are certain things that are better to be obsessed over than others. 
But with this type of conversation, we're able to keep that balance, but also know what's worth focusing on. Where is it that is a healthy space to direct our love? With Saturn, it's more about delayed gratification. It's more about the sacrifice we make today so that the larger gains can be there tomorrow, so that we set ourselves up well to have gains in the long term. There's an understanding that if we restrict ourselves now, if we're mindful now, we will eventually get to a place of ease and that much more easy blessings. So the appreciation is there to put in the time, to put in the effort, that Saturn, but also to do so wisely with intention and focus, that's Pluto. And we're inspired to do just that. And so the great thing is with this energy, we're not likely to be so overindulgent or over decadent at this time as sometimes Venus can incline us towards, but rather we are directing our inclination towards enjoyment uh, and towards feeling a sense of bliss, whether it's a practical bliss or a spiritual bliss or a romantic bliss, but we're directing this energy in a way that keeps the bigger picture in mind. And that makes it not only that much more effective, but that much more enjoyable as well now and into the future. Now, the other big thing happening this week is Mercury. As we start the week right out of the gate, Mercury will enter shadow. This is a really big deal, having Mercury enter shadow. Mercury will spend uh, just a little bit moving in and out of the sign of Aquarius and so enters shadow at the very end of the sign of Aquarius. But will the next day, as we enter a new week, right around Monday or Tuesday, depending on where you are on the planet, it is going to be Mercury that enters the sign of Pisces. And then in the middle of the week, right around Wednesday, Mercury will reach out in harmony with Uranus. So let's talk first about um, Mercury, Aquarius, and Pisces, that shift between these two energies. So in some way, for all of us, again, depending on your own chart, how this Mercury retrograde is speaking to you, we are going to be linking two areas of life together. We are going to find a way to create a bridge, and a part of that is going to involve experimentation and reconsideration. How is it that two different areas of life are linked for you? Now, for the collective, certainly we look at the sign of Aquarius. Aquarius is a sign with a very strong duality to it. I find that there's a lot of emphasis placed on Aquarius for the uh, part of it that has to do with humanitarian efforts, for the part of it that has to do with the collective. Certainly it is that. But as Carl Jung says in his essay Eon, there's also a very strong individualistic energy to the sign of Aquarius. And it is a highly independent energy. And so as much as it is about the collective, it's also about the individual. As much as it is about uh, equality and human rights, it's also about personal freedom. As much as we think of the sign of Aquarius as uh, connected to a sense of harmony and unity, if you think about it, uh, I think about the ideas of Ayn Rand and her philosophy of objectivism. It's a highly individualistic uh, way of looking at the world and way of understanding the world. And Ayn Rand was an Aquarius. She had very strong Aquarian energy to her. And we often see this dichotomy play out with Aquarian energy. And so right now we're just getting a little bit of a taste of this, but then you think about the energy of Pisces. Pisces is about communion. It is about losing the self. It is about not even about a community, not even about an individual, but moving beyond that illusion of separation and instead to merge, to dive in knowing that it isn't that we are part of the collective, but we are the collective itself. And then we have in the middle of the week, we are going to have Uranus, the planet that rules the sign of Aquarius, speaking to that Mercury in the sign of Pisces. And so what that suggests is, on the one hand, a new way to consider communion and connection and interconnection, but still that sense of brilliance and these pockets of insight, uh, that sense of freedom being there as well. 
and how it is that, yes, our thoughts can free us, but also our interconnection to each other can actually be something that is very liberating as well. And I do think that with this energy and with Mercury connected to um, the media, and what we're talking about collectively, with the sign of Pisces connected to compassion as well. Now, in contrast, the sign of Aquarius is actually very detached. It's highly scientific. That is the way that it has been understood. And so it's emotionally detached and there's good things about that because it allows us to make decisions from a place of rationality. But then you take that Piscean energy and it's all about immersion, like what you feel is, period. The way in which energy flows is ultimately who you are, period. Now it is this sense of compassion, this sense of immersion that is meeting mind energy at this time. It's part of what we're talking about. And chances are there's gonna be some really surprising news in terms of this very notion of our understanding of the collective, of the self, of how we are interconnected, of what compassion means, of where maybe there's healthy detachment that is happening as well. And what is it that we as a collective are gonna decide that compassion means also? Now, interestingly, I've done some recent events around the great conjunction, as it's been called by the ancients, that is happening at the end of the year that I am really excited about. In December 21st, at the winter solstice, we are going to have the divine meeting of Jupiter and Saturn in the sign of Aquarius. But even before we get there, we are gonna have some very strong indications and uh, foreshadowing of what that is gonna be at the end of the year and later in the decade, Pluto in the sign of Aquarius as well. So it is gonna be this spring that Saturn dips into Aquarius and then steps back out. It is going to be as Saturn dips into Aquarius at the very end of March, meets Mars in the sign of Aquarius. That is going to be a strong indication as well. But all of this, all of these different celestial events, ultimately, I do believe, tie into the recent Saturn-Pluto conjunction. The recent Saturn-Pluto conjunction that took place, and as I have been talking about as well, it is to me connected to a shift in power, a shift in world power. And the last time this happened 500 years ago, it was the Protestant Reformation. It was a shift in the way that we as humanity understood our relationship with the divine and that shifted power dynamics that changed the world, really. It changed so much of how we know ourselves, how we know our power and how it is that the nations interacted with each other as they went out there in the world. And so it is a very powerful time, but it isn't that right away, that same week, you're gonna feel it, we're gonna know what it is, but rather it unfolds in the weeks going forward from there. And I think that it is all this Aquarian energy that is actually serving as a type of, um, a type of moment that asks us to consider and it, makes one of these very obvious statements. It's one of these moments where it starts to become very clear and in these moments very quickly how power is shifting, how what we know as power and who has the power is going through a transformation and how that's going to speak to how we understand ourselves and whom it is that we know ourselves to be. And so this is the very beginning, right? This Mercury retrograde is part of that beginning. The fact that Mercury is going to be dipping in and out of Aquarius, but still reminding us to keep compassion at the forefront while still evoking Uranus, the planet that rules the sign of Aquarius. Well, it tells me that all of this is slowly laying the groundwork with Saturn just dipping into the sign of Aquarius uh, in March, April, throughout May, and then June stepping back, taking a step back, moving back into Capricorn for a little bit. I think that is gonna be a very powerful moment uh, as well for us. But to bring it back to this week, it is important to watch now what's happening collectively speaking but also personally pay attention to what is happening in your life 
in the first three to four days of this week because once we get to March, it is quite remarkable for the first, not quite three weeks, just under three weeks of March, right? So that whole first part of March, Mercury is actually moving very little. Mercury is actually only moving over about four or five degrees. Like that's the, the astrological technical way to understand it. But what that basically means is the very, very end of Aquarius and the very, very beginning of the sign of Pisces, it is going to be Mercury that goes, retrogrades back or actually starts retrograding back, slows right down slows and then stands still in Aquarius and then moves forward slowly and slowly steps back into the sign of Pisces. That is an extraordinarily long time for Mercury to spend in such a small section of the zodiac, in such a small section of the sky. And what that tells me is what happens now in our own lives personally, we will be revisiting and seeing it differently again and again in the first three weeks of March. Now you add to this, that connection with Uranus, that connection is gonna be repeated as well over the course of this Mars retrograde season. It is gonna be Mercury that is dancing with Uranus and it is actually a key characteristic of this time. And this is ultimately that melding and meshing, helping us to understand Aquarian energy and Piscean energy and how they connect for us in our own lives Yes, individually, but as a collective as well. How do we put these energies together? How do we understand the connection of these different energies and how do we integrate it? That is gonna be part of what we're considering, what we're contemplating, and where some of our most important experimenting and re-experimenting is likely to take place. What is an experiment? At the end of the day, it is doing something again and again and again, right? Yes, you'll shift a little bit, you'll do things a little bit different, you'll hope for a particular outcome, but then you want empirical results, which means it has to be repeatable. And so anything can happen as a one-off, but where is it that you do something and then you shift it a little bit, and then finally you get an outcome, and then when you do it exactly the same way, you get the same result 20 times, 50 times, 100 times. That requires experimentation. And that plays out in every area of life, of course. We use science as a metaphor for this. But in more personal realms and emotional realms and spiritual realms as well, we can apply some of this. And so Mercury retrograde is a great time to refine, to uh, think about doing it again, to think about doing it a little bit differently without necessarily being attached to solid outcomes, without necessarily thinking that this has got to mean something and it's this shot and it's only one shot. If Mercury retrograde teaches us anything, and if this month, as I spoke of in the monthly horoscopes for each sign, if this month teaches us anything, it is that there's always another shot. The universe is abundant. Opportunity can come again and again and again. This idea that opportunity only knocks once, as the axiom says, is just not a thing. I don't believe. I believe that the universe is abundant. And I think that the people who believe that will find that in one form or another, it may not be the exact same thing, it might not be the exact same person and the exact same offer, but in some way or another, you always have another chance, always in anything that you may do. There are always ways not only to attract opportunity, but to create opportunity for yourself. But it does require being willing to try being willing to, in whatever way, whether you're putting yourself out there or you're doing you know, a private creative exercise, in some way it does require giving it another shot, giving it another go. You know, my father, he always used to say, whatever happens, the sky isn't gonna fall. Whatever happens, you go again, you always try again. And this has been something that is such a core part of me. This has become something that is part of my internal dialogue at this point because it was something that he said again and again. And what this essentially taught me was it's okay to try. Try everything. Do as much as you can. 
because ultimately in doing all kinds of things you're casting your net wide and then you find your way forward you know speaking of my father i remember when he had his saturn return uh quite a few years ago now he had a saturn return and at the time he went through a depression and i remember talking to my mom about this and she said you know it isn't a disappointment or a sadness about what didn't work it's what you didn't try what you didn't really give yourself to or give your all to where it was that you didn't take another shot in some way or another or own your shots where it was that you waited for somebody else to give you permission to do what it is that you felt called to do that you wanted to do and so that was such a valuable lesson to me at the time because i remember my mom saying just try do whatever you want do what you want with your life but just try everything so that when you get older you don't feel like i didn't try because if you tried then you have peace well see here's the great thing and here's part of what you know came to be came to pass and that was that okay maybe you didn't try when you had the chance or when you were in a particular time frame but life changes priorities change who you are is going to go through a metamorphosis over the course of your life if you're living well and if you're engaged with your life and if you're open to learning about yourself you are going to change and what you want and even what's worth trying is going to change and every action that we take ultimately it has its wisdom to it there is a perfection a higher perfection playing out at all times and so i feel when i look at the sky it is on the one hand an opportunity to glimpse the perfection perhaps in just a quick moment but it's also an opportunity to be more compassionate towards ourselves to think in new ways and to understand that it isn't just about doing the same thing but just tweaking it but it is really okay if you now want something different or if you think new pathways are for you reconciling the past but moving into your future both aquarius and pisces help us to do just that it is the sign of aquarius that is about the future and focusing on the future and it is the sign of pisces that is about compassion and wisdom and meaning and forgiveness forgiveness where you need it forgiveness if only for yourself as a healing balm and it is pisces that also rules the healing balm to our souls to our psyche and to our spirit what i love about this week for us well look also let me just say at the very end of the week venus is going to move into the sign of aries i'm actually going to talk about that in the context of the full moon that happens at the beginning of next week because we are going to have all this fire energy and it's going to change the way that we understand venusian energy all around but really you can say for this whole week right it is going to be venus and pisces the strong venusian energy that is with us venus doesn't really like being in the sign of aries she's not able to maximize her blessings in the same way as she can in pisces and so take advantage of this time now pay attention to what's happening in the first half of the week especially now knowing that there will be recurrences there will be that opportunity to look at what's transpiring now again with a different lens and my hope is for all of us that we're able to look again with greater compassion than ever before compassion for others for the collective but certainly compassion towards ourself this is the healing waters of pisces and actually even though aquarius is an air sign it's a water bearer right it has its own healing waters as well and we are being invited now to in some way cleanse ourselves it isn't an overnight thing it will slowly unfold and with a week like this it may serve as a very important touchstone inviting you to look at how it is and where it is you are ready for that not only deeper layer of forgiveness but deeper layer of compassion and connection to everyone to everything and certainly towards yourself as well
Well, thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below, what do you love about this week? I love reading you guys. And of course, if you wanna know how all this wonderful stuff this week speaks to you in your sign, log on to NadiaShaw.com. Sign up to be one of my superstars. Superstars get expanded exclusive video scopes each and every week, unlimited access to special horoscopes, access to a monthly uh, hangout Q&A and live meditation, access to a dedicated Facebook group with an amazing community and so much more. All of this in the superstar space. I look forward to meeting you there. There has been a recent uptick in the new uh, superstars who have been coming in. So thank you so much. Thank you to all my new superstars and superstars who've been there from day one. Superstar just very recently celebrated three years three years. It feels like my entire life has changed in the last three years and definitely for the better. And I thank, of course, all my friends, my fans, my superstars, my students, everybody for being a part of it. Thank you so much. So I have a very big announcement. I am so, so excited about this. This is something I didn't mention specifically because I'm all about like the announcement, right? The launch moment. I love uh, tapping into that energy. But I know I've been talking to superstars like every month we get together at the new moon and I've been telling them, when you see what I'm launching, you will realize why I've been so, so busy. And now here it is. I am so very grateful, so very thrilled to present to you custom natal chart reports with my interpretations for you based on your birth data. I have partnered with Cosmogram, which is a, uh, a huge company out of Europe, out of Germany, and they feature uh, all kinds of reports written by some of the most amazing astrologers in the world today. So I put together this whole thing. Now, here's the thing, 780, <laughs> 780 possible combinations. I wrote, so I wrote the paragraph, some, everyone gets at least one paragraph, meaning every aspect gets at least one paragraph. Some get two, some even get three. And when you enter your birth data and you get this report, uh, the report will be many pages long. If you visit the link, you'll see there's a sample report there as well. So you can see how long it actually is. And each one of those sections was written by me. And so you get my interpretation. You're not gonna get 780 sections, but you're gonna get as many aspects as you have in your unique birth chart. That's what you're gonna see in this report. And so again, it is a custom uh, report. It is only for you or whoever you get it for. And you place your order, you enter your birth data, you place your order. And if you place your order before Valentine's Day, you get to use this coupon code that I have up here on the screen. This coupon code gives you 50% off. I don't believe Cosmogram is gonna give us other opportunities to get 50% off because I have partnered with them. They have a say in it, in the pricing and all of that. But I actually put it in the contract uh, that I signed with them many, many months ago. And I said, I wanna have a coupon code when this thing launches so that my friends, my fans, my superstars, my students, who want to get this report can get a really big discount right out of the gate. And so we have this coupon code that gives you a full 50% off. And once you place your order, uh, what happens is you get a confirmation that, yay, we got your order. And then within a few hours, you will get that computer generated report. Now, yes, it's a computer generated report. I wrote the sections like some 780 sections, combinations. And so what I do is I go through the planets, the ascendant and the midheaven. That's what we focus on for this uh, particular report. And you can learn a lot more about it by clicking on the link below. The full description is there. Remember the coupon code, because if you use the coupon code, you get 50% off only until Valentine's Day. And I hope that you absolutely love it. Thank you so much. I just announced this like yesterday on the first, uh, and a lot of orders have already been placed and thank you. Thank you for your trust in my interpretation of the astrological sky. Uh, it means so, so very much to me. And uh, I'm just so grateful to be able to have this life, but to have this opportunity to in some way uh, 
represent and evoke and be a steward to the sky and a love for the sky. And this is like the next way and the next thing that I'm doing in order to affirm that the universe is wise and loving. So yes, my take on your chart, it's written, it's detailed, it goes through the different aspects in your chart, and I hope you absolutely love it. So click on the link below, learn more about it, and as you learn about it, place your order before Valentine's Day to get that very big discount. Synchronicity University is well underway. Earlier today, we had a class on aspects uh, and transits of Pluto. That was so much fun. I was a little sleep deprived and a little loopy and we went for almost three hours, even though it's supposed to be a two hour class. But I always take that into account. You know, I, I just kind of hang out with you guys and talk and share and answer questions. It's always so much fun. And it was a lot of fun to talk about Pluto. I really enjoyed that. And uh, it was getting wonderful feedback as well. So thank you so much to all the students who came live, who catch it on the replay, uh, who download it after the fact. Next week, we are looking at Jupiter in aspect. And so that'll be a really fun class as well. It'll be a lighter energy than Pluto, certainly. Uh, because it is about the expansion and the blessings and how to create luck in your life. And so that's going to be a lot of fun to take on as well. You can still order the package at a discounted rate. Uh, and it is also the case that you can get one class at a time as well. And so check out the links below onto my website and I look forward to seeing you in class. My books as well, my books behind me. Uh, right now, I'm still in Canada in the cold, but I'm really looking forward to next week when I do this video. Universe willing, I will be back in Cancun. I'm hoping there's a different background by then because I'll be in Cancun. I'm hoping Biggie will be jumping up and down on the sofa behind me because I'll be back in Cancun. I'm really looking forward uh, because that is home to me. That is my adopted home. That is where I feel at home. As much as Canada will always be home to me as well. But anyways, yes, I'm at my parents' house. You can see by the background and I have my books in the background as well. Now, the Body and the Cosmos, thank you for making that a number one new release on Amazon in New Age Astrology. Uh, thank you for the wonderful feedback. If you are one of the many people who have gotten this book, please do leave a uh, glowing review on Amazon. I would absolutely appreciate that so very much. Prayers to the Sky, uh, those have started to go out. The advanced copies have started to go out and I will give you more information very soon about purchasing an advanced copy through Amazon and how that whole thing is going to come together. Uh, that's been just such a joy to, to do Prayers to the Sky because it does affirm how spiritually significant um, the planets are to me. But it actually ended up like being astrological magic like I call it astrological magic light because I I just kind of felt and realized that people want me to and people have enjoyed so much my astrological magic class I did with Synchronicity University was the most popular class that I have taught people really love it and thank you so much and there's part one part two part three so a lot of that wisdom that I share in those classes is in this book all in written form but of course there's also you know understanding the creation myths of the different planets uh, looking particularly at the Greek creation myths that's uh, something that has spoken to me and so I explore the myths to help understand this energy archetypally and what it could mean for you. And then there are prayers that I have written. There's a sample meditation in there if you prefer to do it as a meditation uh, and all kinds of guidance in there. Everything from timing to rituals uh, to a more overview to a philosophical understanding, a little bit of history as well. We look at the moon as well. We touch on that. So there's a lot in there <laughs> and I hope that you absolutely love it. Thank you to all the people who ordered advanced copies. I appreciate you guys so, so very much. And I know that they should be arriving soon. And, uh, and so, yes, thank you. And I'll let you guys know when it's available on Amazon as an advanced copy. Hoping that's very soon. Events, I have a whole lot of live events coming up. 
uh, very, very soon. I will be in Istanbul uh, with a stellar group of people as part of an astrology weekend. I hope that you will check that out. Uh, some of my friends are going to be there as well, fellow astrologers. So I think it's going to be a lot of fun for us as teachers, but also connecting with friends and fans in Istanbul again. I think that the last time I was in Istanbul, if I remember correctly, it was the end of 2016. And um, there was so much love. My God, thank you so much, Istanbul. I appreciate you guys so much. Last time I took my mom. This time I'm taking my dad. So my dad's going to be there as well. You can meet my dad if you want, since I quote him so much and talk about him in my videos. Um, but I remember how much love there was. And it was right after that trip, which was at the very end of November, beginning of December 2016. It was right after that in January of 2017, if memory serves me correctly. I believe it does. Uh, that is when I started Superstar. So I'm looking forward to my next affirmation and epiphany and the love. I think it's going to be so much fun. And then I will be off to Bangkok and Thailand. It is one of my very favorite cities in the world. There's a lot of information available about that as well if you click on the link in the description below. But I'll be doing a whole weekend on astrology and holistic health. We'll be talking about the body and the cosmos. I'll have a small number of books available for sale in Istanbul and in Bangkok as well. Now, if you are in Bangkok in particular, I don't know if I'm going to have time in Istanbul, but certainly in, uh, in Thailand, if you are in Thailand, and I know there are a lot of friends and fans out there in Thailand because there's a lot of enthusiasm for this event and I appreciate that so much. Um, but if you'd like a reading, if you'd like a consultation, we can make that happen. You can connect actually with the organizer of the event. So they've done a beautiful job. They provided so much information. Thank you so much to the organizers there. But do click on the link in the description below. If you go to my website on the events page and you click on that, it opens up all kinds of information you need about three days of events. You can come to one, you can come to all three, but you would be very welcome. Uh, at either event and again books consultations all of that available in bangkok i truly look forward to meeting friends and fans out there and then as we navigate forward it is going to be may that is jam-packed and super busy for me um i will be on a bit of a world tour well like a, a tour certainly it is a world tour now that i think about it first i will be in costa rica with uh, astrology rising costa rica.com this is an incredible event that is going to be taking place kai pacha is the host of the event he's the organizer as well uh, you can go to astrology rising costa rica.com and learn all about it some of the most brilliant astrologers in the world today are going to be there. Rick Levine, the great Rick Levine, one of my very favorite people. Uh, Maurice Fernandez, Sol Janison, uh, Timothy Halloran, Ari Wolf, Christina Claudel, Julia Simas of the hugely influential Cosmic Intelligence Agency, and of course, Kai Pacha as well, because it is his event and he has it all planned out. He's got a whole schedule, lots of learning, lots of fun. We're going to have the whole resort to ourselves, so that's going to be fun too. Hanging out with other astrologers, 200 people are expected to be there. We do have space for 200 people. And I know that a lot of tickets, I think we're already at almost 100 uh, tickets already sold out. So the earlier you buy your tickets, the cheaper the price is. So if you want to come to Costa Rica, astrologyrisingcostarica.com, I would encourage you to have a look at that like now, especially as the week is beginning. And before we are full fledged in the Mercury retrograde season, it might be a good idea because you'll get a cheaper price and uh, you'll get a really good idea of what you can expect. And yeah, I think it's going to be great. My first time in Costa Rica, I'm really looking forward to it. Then I will be in Toronto in the middle of the month. It is Saturday, I believe off the top of my head, the 16th. I'll be uh, speaking with Astrology Toronto, doing a, a one day talk. Then I will be in Seattle at, um, 
Memorial Day weekend as part of the NORWAC conference. I'm so excited to be back. The NORWAC conference is really amazing. It's such an amazing energy of people coming together. Uh, it's so uh, inclusive and intimate and everybody's welcome and everybody's equal and you're hanging out with astrologers and students and people at all levels. I have really enjoyed it. So you would be very welcome to join us there as well. And then I will be going to Las Vegas to do a talk on the last Tuesday of the month and then a full day workshop on Saturday, the last Saturday of May. Then I go back to Cancun. And then other than perhaps coming to Canada for a quick visit, I am really looking forward to my summer with Biggie, hanging out with Biggie. I'm really, really looking forward to that. But then in September, I'll be in Colorado with the ESAR conference. And then after that, I'm going to think about, okay, am I taking on any other speaking engagements? What am I doing next? Right now, the way that I feel at this moment is I want to get home to Biggie. I want to be with my dog. I want to hang out with him. I want to walk with him. I want to learn from him because I love him so much. And I know if you're not a dog person, you might not get it. But if you are a dog person, you get it. And so I wasn't a dog person until two years ago. And then Biggie came into my life and, and, and changed everything, I tell you. And I think that's it for today. Thank you. Thank you so much for your love, for your trust, for your patience, for all of it. I truly am so grateful to have these moments with you uh, and to touch base with you each and every week. And of course, all the stuff I spoke about, links in the description below, whether you want to know about the astrology through Superstar, whether it is that you want to know uh, about the different events and the offerings that I spoke of. As I said, it is a limited time discounted rate, 50% off. That's really huge. Uh, and that is only available until Valentine's Day for a custom natal chart reading with my interpretations of your chart, of the different aspects in your chart. And if you click on the link, you'll see the sample. So you'll get to see exactly what it is that you're getting. And then if you place your order and you use the coupon code, uh, you get 50% off. And I hope that you absolutely love it and you cherish it always. When I was a teenager, I remember my aunt gave me a gift of a natal chart reading, a report, a computerized report. And this ended up meaning so much to me. And I actually still have that report. Like it's actually in a box somewhere because I read it again and again and again. I poured over this report. And it was this report that got me into chart readings, that wanted me to learn about chart readings. It was such a powerful experience. It felt like I was reading me on paper. And I know that uh, these readings have a really rich tradition. They actually, it was Alan Leo who uh, originated this concept of these automatic reports. And so it's always been something that I wanted to do, that I hoped to do. It has always been a goal of mine. And so now to be able to pay it forward, to be able to give that to others, what me getting a report did for me, my hope is that it facilitates that awareness for you. And uh, to be able to do that, to be a part of it, to have the energy to do it, let me say that, because Saturn in uh, Sagittarius, that was pretty brutal. I've spoken about that from time to time. That was a very hard transit for me. And I barely had any energy as Saturn was moving through the sixth house, my natal sixth house. Now it feels really good. It feels so good to feel very connected to what I have to share. And because I know life is flux and flow, like it's always changing. And I just want to surrender and be open to the changes and who it is I'm meant to be next. Well, it feels really good to take uh, a full connection to this moment and to produce this and to be able to offer it to you. And so thank you for the amazing response it's already been getting. And I, again, I hope you absolutely love it and cherish it always. And thank you again for watching. I'm truly so grateful for you. It'll be a great week. Enjoy.